It's time to start your cleaning spree. Welcome to Jensen's DIY, and this is 41 tips to make your entire home cleaner than it's ever been. One, soak paper towels in vinegar. Then let them sit on your faucets to get rid of any buildup. Then use a vinegar soaked towel to shine up the faucet and the fixtures in your shower and tub. This one was amazing. We have really hard water in Arizona and all that gunk wiped right off. Two, if your shower curtain and liner are at all moldy, replace them or at the very least bleach them well. Mold spores are microscopic, so if you can actually see the black color, you literally have millions or billions of spores present. And if you have allergies or asthma, by the time you can see the mold, it may already be irritating you. Most shower curtains are machine washable, and you can actually toss your liner in the wash too. Three, while you're at it, wash your towels and bath mats. You're supposed to wash your towels every three uses, but if it's been a while, just wash them on a disinfecting cycle or with some bleach. Four, let bleach soaked cotton coil sit on the mildew in your bathtub overnight. You could recock the edges of your bathtub instead, and that's fine, but if you'd rather not, like me, try this tip. First, cut a piece of cotton coil, soak it in bleach, and let it sit overnight on the mold. Then, just used a Q-tip to press it into the mold so you wouldn't get bleach on my fingers. Look at the difference just on that little bit. Isn't it incredible? Five, while you have the bleach out, use it to spray down your shower door tracks, if you have them. Those things get nasty. Don't be afraid of bleach because it's bleach. Yes, it's smelly. You probably shouldn't use it all the time. And yes, you should follow basic safety precautions. Six, detach your shower head and give it a good vinegar soak to descale and unclog any plugged jets. On regular cleans, you can use the plastic bag trick. It works really well. But once or twice a year, depending on how hard the water is at your home, a full descale can help with water pressure and flow. Here's how to do it. Begin this project by unscrewing the shower head by gripping the shower neck with a pipe wrench. Next, Open the shower head holes by soaking the head overnight in a vinegar bath and poking the loosened material scale free with a toothpick. Seven, take an acidic cleaner to the water stains on your shower's glass. Just uh, wait until all the bleaching stuff is done, please. You could buy a store-bought home cleaner like Barkeeper's Friend at $6.34. If the hard water stains aren't that bad, then feel free to use whatever glass cleaner you keep around. Eight, Dip a lemon in salt and use it to get rid of lingering rust stains in your sink and sink area. You don't need to scrub very hard at all. The acid in the lemon will do most of the work for you. It took seconds, cost nothing, and most important of all is that it actually works. Nine, after you've done your regularly scheduled toilet cleaning, go the extra mile and clean your siphons, AKA the water holes in your toilet. First, turn off the water to your toilet. Once you've turned off the water, flush the toilet so your water tank empties, and then pour a gallon of water into the toilet bowl to flush all the water out. Next, deep clean. You're going to want to scrub under the toilet rim and clean around the siphons. Now that your rim and siphons are clean and dry, tape them off with duct tape. Cover each siphon with duct tape around the rim and make sure they're secure. Last, pour vinegar into the toilet tank and flush the toilet. This allows the vinegar to run into the siphons and duct tape will keep it there. Let the vinegar sit in the rim in the siphons overnight. The next morning you can remove the duct tape, turn the water back on and flush the toilet a couple of times to get everything back to usual. And you're done. 10. Shine up your stainless sink using Barkeeper's Friend. Just make sure to check your manufacturer's instructions to see if it's an approved cleaner, which you can usually find with a quick Google search. If you have a porcelain sink, check the manufacturer's instructions too. Then you can consider using Barkeeper's Friend or hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. Another quick tip, after you scrub and rinse well, dry your sink completely and then use a tiny bit of olive oil on paper towel to polish the entire sink. It keeps super shiny longer and things don't stick to the sink as easily. 11. 
microwave a bowl of lemons in water to make all the gunk come out in one easy swipe. Let your grimy stove burner sit in a bag of ammonia overnight to get rid of all the layers of cooked on gunk. Simply place the burner in a Ziploc bag. Add a small amount of ammonia. Seal the bag and let it sit overnight. Ammonia is stinky, but worth it. Just make sure to do it outside. 13. If you have electric stove burners, pull them off your stove and give them some elbow grease. Here's how to do it. First, Wait for the burners to completely cool, then remove them from the stovetop. Using a cloth and a bit of mild dish soap and water, rinse any residue from the burner coils. If there's any cooked on food residue that won't come off with the soap and water mixture, make a paste from baking soda and water, then apply it to the tough spot. And last, make sure the burners are completely dry before you try to replace them. 14. Clean a glass cooktop with minimal scrubbing. Sprinkle on baking soda, let it soak with a damp towel for about 15 minutes, then rub away. First, you fill a bowl with hot tap water and mix it with some dish soap. Submerge the rag in a bowl and get it wet. Apply baking soda in a generous amount all over the affected area. Now, pull out that hot soapy rag out of the bowl and squeeze half the water out. You want it to be soggy, not sopping. Then wait about 15 minutes. Once the time is up, Swirl the rag around in circles, using the baking soda paste as a gentle scrub. Then, dry up the surface and shine it up with a cloth. The result is as good as new. 15. Take a melamine sponge to your oven glass to make it sparkle again. Just wow! Melamine sponges will work for getting grime out of the rest of your oven too. The brand name for these types of sponges are the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, which are easy to find in grocery stores. Alternating between wet and dry magic erasers work the best to get rid of all the grime. If your oven is anything near the code red situation mine was, you're going to want two magic erasers for this job. 16. Banish that greasy dust that inevitably builds up wherever you cook with a little bit of mineral oil. This is an image on the top of the microwave where dust has mixed with aerated oil to make a thin film of gunk that's really tough to clean. See all those rolled up balls of dust? That's what happens when you try and wipe away the oily dust with a dry rag. The solution? Put a couple drops of mineral oil on a paper towel. Wipe the paper towel over the dirty surface and watch the gunk come right off. When you are done cleaning, simply wipe down the surfaces one more time with a new paper towel. This leaves the surface coated lightly in oil, which makes future oil splatters much, much easier to clean up. 17. If your couch is covered in fabric and not leather, sprinkle baking soda on it to get rid of odors. Here's how to do it. First, sprinkle the entire couch with a good heap of baking soda. Baking soda helps release lurking smells and breaks up stains in the fabric. Mix together one teaspoon dishwashing liquid, one tablespoon white vinegar, one cup warm water, and one teaspoon baking soda. Dip the washcloth in the cleaning solution and gently dab and rub stains, or simply use for wiping down the entire couch. Allow the couch to dry and touch up as needed. It may appear darker in color until it's completely dry. 18. Lampshades usually collect all kinds of dust and pet fur from all over the house and vacuuming them. Even with the most high-powered vacuum, it just never seems to cut it. Quickly dust your lampshades by running a lint roller over them. You'll get perfectly dust-free lampshades, zero frustration, and a little bit of fun, too. 19. If you don't want to pay to have your area rug professionally cleaned, you can wash it out in the driveway. After vacuuming your rugs, take them outside to a cemented area. Hose down your rugs until they are completely saturated with clean water. Next, you will pour some laundry detergent on your rug and then spray water over the soapy areas to create a few bubbles. And then begin brushing your rug. Once you have brushed the entire rug, let it sit in the sun anywhere from 10 minutes up to 24 hours. Honestly, I would do this with rugs that I paid $100 or less for. 
more expensive rugs I will take to have professionally cleaned. But of course, if you want to give it a go on the rugs you have, try it! 20. Dust your TV screen with a coffee filter. For lint-free viewing, grab a coffee filter to wipe down dusty and sticky computer monitors and TV screens regularly. 21. Wipe down all of your game consoles and other electronics with a microfiber cloth. Then, squirt with compressed air to get all the dust out of the crevices. Step 1. You want to begin by unhooking all the cords from the console and putting it on a clean, hard surface. Step 2. Take your can of compressed air and shoot a short burst of air throughout the middle indent around the console. Step 3. Gently use your microfiber cloth to brush away any dust buildup from the shiny side of your console. Step 4. Make sure to wipe away any dust where your console will be laying and rehook all the cords back to the system. 22. Wash all of the pillows that you sleep on regularly. The number one rule of pillow washing is to wash two at a time to keep the load balanced during the spin cycle. Position your pillows on opposite sides of your wash basin and select hot wash and extra rinse options. Add your detergent and one cup of bleach to your washer. And then run the washer. Add a couple of clean tennis balls to the dryer to help fluff pillows as they dry. If possible, lay your pillows out in the sun after running through the dryer. You can skip the bleach if you prefer. Your pillows will still be clean, just not as disinfected as they might be otherwise. 23. Run your sheets, mattress cover, and duvet cover through the laundry. Then, use this rolling trick to put your duvet cover back on in no time. No climbing inside the cover required. Twenty-four. Make your own reusable cleaning wipes to sanitize all of the non-porous surfaces, like countertops in your bathroom and kitchen, your windowsill, doorknobs, light switches and light switch covers, cabinet knobs and drawer pulls, coffee table, side table, bedside table, I could keep going. Here's how to make your own reusable wipes. First, take an old t-shirt or PJs or whatever that is bound for the donation bin and cut it up into rag-sized cloths. Pour one cup warm water, one eighth cup or one ounce liquid Castile soap, and five to ten drops of your favorite essential oil into a jar with a tight-fitting lid. Place the rags into the jar with the liquid. Put the top on the jar or whatever lidded container you prefer and turn upside down a few times until all the rags are soaked. After being used, the cloths can be washed and returned to the jar for reuse over and over again. 25. Use a pillowcase to dust off your grimy fan blades. A very nifty way to clean your fan blades without getting dust all over the place. 26. Detach all of your floor and ceiling air vents and run them through the dishwasher. This will work for the vent cover for your bathroom fan too. Just make sure not to run the heat dry cycle if any of the vents are plastic. 27. Clean your floors with the recommended cleaner and mop. Wood. Dust with microfiber cloth mop first. Then spray on a mild, water-based cleanser made for floor and mop with dry cloth. Laminate. Vacuum or sweep dirt. Then use a mop dampened with a mild cleanser and water solution. Wipe away lingering moisture with a dry cloth mop. Linoleum. Mop regularly with a multi-surface cleaner to maintain shine. Wax every two to six months. Apply two coats, waiting for the first to dry before adding the second. Then buff with soft cloth mop. Ceramic tile. Mop with warm water and tile cleaner. Then use a dry cloth to absorb water that collects in grout lines. Concrete. Remove grease stains in the garage using a stiff brush broom and hot water mixed with an alkaline degreaser, which emulsifies the oil. Then, rinse with a hose. 28. Bleach the grout in your bathroom, kitchen, and all other tile with a clinging gel. Simply fill your grout lines with this stuff and let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes. After it sat for a while, use a toothbrush to scrub the grout. Then, let it sit for another 5 minutes. 
Use your mop with just water to clean up what was left of the cleanser. 29. Dust all of your blinds thoroughly with a pair of tongs and a couple of microfiber cloths. To create this, simply wrap one piece around one side of the tongs and secure with rubber bands. Wrap the other side in the same manner. When the cloths get too dirty, fold them the other way. Using an all-purpose cleaner or dust control spray might get the job done faster, but it's completely optional. 30. Clean your windows, including the window sills, with a lint-free rag and a window cleanser of your choice. Here's what you'll need. 1 cup white vinegar, 2 and a quarter cups of distilled water, half cup rubbing alcohol, 1 tablespoon of cornstarch. Using a funnel, pour everything into a 32 ounce bottle and shake until mixed. Shake, spray, wipe with a clean dry flour sack towel and enjoy your sparkling clean glass. 31. Sanitize and clean your vacuum before you vacuum all of the carpets in the house. A couple of tools in 15 minutes and you'll have a clean, like new vacuum cleaner. Do this little routine monthly and you'll be extending the life of your vacuum cleaner. First, take everything apart that can be taken apart to ensure you get everything cleaned properly. Empty the canister in a garbage bag or remove and dispose of vacuum cleaner bags. Use a scissor or seam ripper to carefully cut hair and string, yarn, whatever is tangled up in the beater bar of your vacuum cleaner. Apply rubbing alcohol to a cotton pad, then rub on the bottom of the vacuum cleaner to disinfect it. If you can wash or wipe out a canister, wash or wipe it. Completely wipe down the entire vacuum cleaner with a damp microfiber cloth. 32. While you're at it, use a seam ripper to get rid of all the twisted hair in your vacuum's brush. 33. Banish carpet stains without excessive scrubbing by using your iron. All you need is to spray the spot with a solution of one part vinegar with two parts water. Lay a damp rag over the spot. Iron on steam setting for about 30 seconds. If the stain is really stubborn, repeat the steps, but try it. Chances are it will work. 34. Clean your clean machine, the washer. Here's how you do it. Fill the washer with hot water. Add one quart of chlorine bleach, then let it sit for one hour. After one hour, allow the washer to run through its longest wash and spin cycle. Immediately fill the washer with hot water again and add one quart of distilled white vinegar. Let agitate for a minute and again, let it sit for one hour. While it's soaking, dip a scrubber sponge in the vinegar water and detail all the nooks and crannies of your washer, including the knobs, the lid, and the exterior. After an hour, run the longest wash and spin cycle again. Your trusty washing machine should now be shiny and clean and ready for more abuse. 35. Get the mold out of your front-loading washer with bleach, water, and a towel. Start by wiping down the whole rubber gasket with a white rag soaked in a 50-50 mixture of bleach and warm water. Soak a towel with your bleach mixture, shove it into the gasket, and let it sit for 30 minutes. 36. Use toilet cleaner and a toilet brush on your garage trash cans. Try using a liquid toilet bowl cleaner to wash the insides of a dirty trash can. It will cling to the sides for better cleaning. A toilet brush will help you reach down inside. This will also help with that trash odor that slams you in the face every time you walk in the garage door. 37. Make the steel plate on your iron smooth and shiny again. First, sprinkle salt onto the ironing board. Turn the iron to the highest setting and set off the steam option. And then, simply iron over the salt. The dirt sticks to the salt and the iron becomes clean and shiny. 38. Wash the outside of your windows, assuming you live in a house with access to a hose. First, create a homemade window cleaner from two cups of water, one quarter cup of white vinegar, and half a teaspoon of dish detergent. Using a soft bristle scrub brush on an extension pole hand thingy, dip the brush in a bucket of the solution and scrub it on the window. Before it has a chance to dry, rinse it off with clean water. A hose fitted with a sprayer attachment will help. 39. If the oil stains on your driveway bug you, get rid of them since oil can leave a dark stain on your pavement. Start by covering the stain with cornstarch, baking soda, or cornmeal which may help absorb the extra moisture. 
once the pavement is dry. Wet the stain with water and scrub with a stiff brush and a paste made from baking soda and water. Finally, rinse the pavement with a hose and let air dry. 40. Scrub the mold off your basement walls with diluted detergent. Start by mixing 1 quarter cup of laundry detergent. Mix 1 quarter to 1 half cup of teaspoon per gallon of warm water. Use a brush with stiff fiber bristles, not a wire brush, and scrub until all the discoloration has been removed. To disinfect, spray the walls with a 1 to 1 solution of vinegar and water and allow the vinegar to dry. To prevent mold from returning, dust the walls with borax or add borax to the vinegar spray when you disinfect. 41. If you have patio furniture, pull it out onto your driveway and give it a good scrub. Make up a bucket with one part bleach to 10 parts water and use a scrub brush to scrub your lawn furniture. If it's beyond repair, you just might have to purchase some new patio furniture. Do not do this on your actual lawn. Clean your outdoor furniture on your driveway. If you use a hose to rinse off the furniture after scrubbing, make sure you're not letting the water run onto your lawn unless you want dead grass. And that's all for now. For more cleaning tips and organizing ideas, stay tuned to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next videos.